<laughs> okay, we're recording our Chaos Diversity and Inclusion Working Group meeting on May 13, 2019. Um, we did not put together an agenda, so what do we want to talk about today? <laughs> <laughs> So uh, last week it was uh, Nicole and me, um, and we were uh, well, and Matt, sorry, and Kevin, they, they joined after all, yeah. Uh, but we were mainly discussing about the KubeCon um, and the talk we have there, and then we are having another talk about the TNI uh, related to uh, inner source uh, in the inner source meetup. That, by the way, if you know someone that is uh, attending KubeCon in Barcelona, it would be great if. Uh, if you can send them there because it's like five minutes walking from the venue. Um, it's first like uh, Diane Mueller will talk about the uh, well, cultural approach in Red Hat and how this is helping to drive innovation. And then we have this uh, specific discussion about experiences working in inclusive environments by Sarah and Nicole. So it would be great to have people. And I don't know, for instance, Don, if you know someone that is joining or attending KubeCon, if there's someone interested in this, that'd be great. In the inner source bit, you mean? No, it, well, it's, yeah, it's, uh, so people attending KubeCon that might be interested in inner source or DNI or, well, this stuff. Cool. Well, mainly for, from your company, I mean. Yeah, we don't, we don't really do inner source at the company because all of the stuff that we do is based on open source. Mm -hmm. So, so inner source isn't really something we ever, we ever really talk about at Pivotal mm -hmm. um, because, yeah, because it's all, it's all open source. Well, it's not all open source, but all of our stuff is open source at the core anyways. Mm -hmm. And then we have some, we have some proprietary bits, but we mostly just, we mostly collaborate in open source communities. So we don't really have a lot of inner source stuff. But, well, it's, it's, so the talks are related to about driving innovation. Mm -hmm. helping with internal communities and the community out of the company and so on. So, yeah. And, okay. and then the other one is about experiences in working in inclusive uh, environments. So it's inner source, the main topic, but I guess it's kind of a uh, high level topics. Okay. I'll take another look at, I'll, I'll look at the agenda. Thank you. Um, and looking, sorry, looking at the minutes from last week about KubeCon, um, are you are you looking to put someone from the Kubernetes community on the panel? Is that what you're looking? Yeah, for? we are still there. Okay. The last news I have is we have no one. Okay, if you can't find someone else to do it, I can do it. I mean, I'm a I'm a Kubernetes org member and I'm involved in the Kubernetes community. So if you can't find, it sounded like maybe Sarah was going to talk to Paris, who would be mm -hmm. fantastic if you could convince her to do it. Um, but. Yeah, if you need somebody, I'm, I'm happy to I'm happy to pitch in because I do. Okay. I do participate in in the Kubernetes community. Okay, that's great. Thank you. So I will let uh, Sarah and Nicole on this. And probably you will you will hear from us. Okay. But you can get Paris, get Paris, because I think she'd be great. Okay. I, I'd love to see her on the panel. Yeah, I think we are. Cause I feel like it's always the same ones of us that do the panel together. And so I like the idea of shaking it up and adding some different people mm -hmm. um, so that it's not just like you, me, Nicole, Sarah. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. And, and this is, this is what we were mainly discussing. Then we, we were discussing about Grace Hooper that the, uh, well, we still need to look, and now that Matt is around, welcome Matt. Um, we have to look for someone perhaps attending Grace Hooper on behalf of Grimoire Lab, so that person can help a bit and so on. Yeah, and then the community breach that we have our first $5. <laughs> I was just looking on the community breach website. We now have $16,000. Oh, really? I is assume that's... I, I cannot see because the website fails. It gives me an error message when I try to. Wow. Open. Oh. -ho. Wait, we have how much money? Sixteen thousand. Well, <laughs> what? <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, it's the Linux Foundation. Linux Foundation. So it we must have... be because it says backers zero. 
Yeah, so we have recent trans transactions. We have a couple of them for 16,000 via the Linux Foundation. Uh, all right, well, uh, that's unexpected. I'll check that out when I get to my computer. Okay, and then we have $5 from Kevin. Thank you, Kevin, and $5 from Georg. Thank you, Georg, and thank you, Linux <laughs> Foundation. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, yeah, undoubtedly. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, um, Linux Foundation transferred four thousand dollars and then twelve thousand uh, dollars. All right. And then we have four thousand for travel expenses and twelve thousand for others. Oh, well, <laughs> I'm totally baffled by this, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think that was on their website. Like, if you get accepted, you get money. So that's awesome. Um, all right. I wonder. I wonder if they were just going through and um, allocating some money to some of the projects that they that are under the Linux Foundation. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'll. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of hate to ask. <laughs> <laughs> like it's the mistake. We don't want to know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. We, should, uh, we should ask Sarah. Sarah might have some. Yeah, I'll definitely ask. I would like to be above board on all this yeah, stuff. Yeah, totally. No, I was just teasing. Um, yeah, we should definitely, yeah, I would be curious to know, I would also just be curious to know how we were, how we were selected for the, for the funding. I'm just, okay. Yeah. I'll yeah, find I'm out a little bit. Of, I'm just sort of curious. Yeah. I will find out. I'll do a little bit of digging. Not complaining. Just <laughs> no. <laughs> and then I'll send out, I was going to send out the prospectus today. Mm -hmm. I heard you kind of talking about the workshops and stuff like that. So I'll mm -hmm. get that out today to a few folks and then um grace hopper mm -hmm. that um we're having a meeting with a woman by the name of zara on wednesday i think and right now auger is going to be part of the grace hopper it's that pre-day daniel i just didn't i didn't commit grimoire lab yet because you were not sure if people could come from yep. Betergia. yep so that's just kind of where it stands right now. Yeah, we may have some new people on board, so let's see. Okay, but you'll have to, I do need to know, I'm guessing sooner rather than later, because I think okay. they're trying to organize things Okay. at the moment. Sounds good. Yeah, um, um, so next week I mean, uh, do you mind giving me this week? Yeah, I mean, I yeah, take... Just let me know as soon as you can. I, I, this one's a little out of my control. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. um, so they're the ones. I'll, I'll get more information on Wednesday, and I'll yeah. ping you if there's something urgent. Yeah, yeah. I remember you said way. that uh, we may have covered um, the hotel, but not the three, right? Yeah. So just keep me posted. Okay. okay. Are there? Um, this is gonna sound like a weird, weird question, but are there any are there any restrictions on participating in Grace Hopper? Because it's, I mean, it's basically uh, a big gathering of women in technology. Yep. yep. Okay. Um, I don't think there's restrictions on participating. They okay. they have a call, you know, for presentations, okay. which is kind yeah. of a normal, normal thing. And this is this is actually a pre. It's like a workshop prior to the event. Mm -hmm. It's associated with the event, but it's a. Uh, like a hands-on workshop to allow the participants to actually participate with projects okay, and make contributions and, you know, kind of look under the hood a little bit more than maybe what they would see in a. Okay. Uh, but there's no, there's no expectation that those tutorials are typically led by women. Uh, no. Uh -uh. So as okay. far as I've been explaining to Zara that, you know, Sean would probably be there for the auger, okay. auger one. Um, okay, cool. If, if you want to participate at all, let me know. Or if you know anybody that wants to participate at all, let me know. Because we are, I think they want two people to help lead the sessions. Okay. Yeah, I I probably can't. It's just okay. It's just one more trip to the U.S. That I, it is. <laughs> I, I already have a lot of conferences in the U.S. and I. No problem. Yeah, it's just a lot of travel. Well, how about this? If somebody comes to mind, just go ahead and reach out to me. It's okay. totally fine. Okay. I, I, just, I just wanted to ask the question and make sure that we were um, not caught by surprise. 
yeah, I don't think so. So. Cool. Mm -hmm. So those are my updates. On an exciting note, Nicole and I were on the podcast of the new stack. And we got a full 23 minutes talking about chaos and the diversity and inclusion working group. Uh, was really good. At least That's awesome. Can... Did it go out in the feed yet? Yes, it is. Um, it's already live since Friday. Okay. Great. Awesome. Which uh, do you do you know which new stack feed that went out in? I only subscribe to some of them. So uh, I always have a trouble finding it. <laughs> <laughs> they have an analysts I... one, and then they have a makers one. They have it some might, others too. It might be on the makers one. It's not context. Yes, it is makers. Here I can post the chat. The link in the Google Doc. Great. There. Yeah, thank you for the link. Oh, it's in the context podcast. There I it is. It. Yep, there it is. See, I, I, I subscribe to him on my, in my podcast app, but I don't subscribe to that one. Yep. Oh, I should. That's got some good stuff in it. Okay. All right. So anyway, it's out. Thanks. Sorry. Um, Feel free to listen, and if you think of better ways to talk about chaos, we can talk about it because I'm also interested in always improving how we tell others who are not part of chaos what we actually do. Things we we may do that was really successful in some previous meetings was to work on certain metrics because when I was uh, detailing these metrics about the, the, the meeting uh, well, it happened that uh, as you know that we have some missing metrics. Still, so, so, I'm sorry, like, Daniel. I need to ask Matt. Matt, can you mute yourself, please? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to do that. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I much figured better. it out. Yeah, so I, I was wondering if we can spend some time, well, I, I, I don't mean today or the next week, but uh, spend some time like having, I think Matt is still unmuted. <laughs> Am I unmuted? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, you're you muted for like like a second and then... Mute me again. I, there, you're muted yourself. Perfect. Okay. So if, if we can spend some time uh, working on some of the metrics also. To give I think that's an excellent idea. I was thinking the same thing just now. Um, so let's go to our repository and figure out which one we want to work on. Uh, what has worked really well in the past is that we pick out one metric and then work on it together in the Google Doc. Um, can you say again? Sorry, I, I missed something. I was just saying, let's go to our repository and pick out okay. one metric to talk about. Okay. Uh, because it has worked really well that we work on the same metric during our calls. So uh, when, when I was detailing this, one of the first thing I was doing was uh, 
Well, let's go to uh, the first metrics we have listed. Um, we had some, so basically even diversity in this case. So I don't know if we're gonna start, let's say, it's it's more about, about, about having some sense of complete, completeness. Um, so we, we can try to fill each of the first metrics we have for each of the focus areas, so please, if someone click there, it's like, hey, we have something here. Does it make sense? So that makes perfect sense. The, I don't know, uh, if you remember, we did the level of completeness exercise. I posted the chat document okay. in the chat. So maybe we can pick out a metric that is yellow or even blue, um, which both indicate that we need more work on those mm -hmm. metrics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we could, for example, do the um, demographic diversity metric or the community inclusivity metric uh, listening. Mm -hmm. How about contribution type? Since that is one where we already have a have some work. Um, it one contribution type you said yeah there's a poll request that i had put together some time ago um here it's poll request 153 and emma had come back and said hey this looks like really good stuff but it goes beyond the narrow diversity and inclusion focus that we have and my reply right now is that, sure, it needs more detail because we don't have this metric in other working groups right now. Mm -hmm. And so let's just put it out there. And then as other working groups want to put their own lens on it, we can move parts of the definition around the chaos project. But let's mm -hmm. start with what we already have. Yeah, I remember having some of the same concerns as as Emma. So I'm gonna just drop this into a Google Doc and then we can revise it there. Mm -hmm. So the content of what I had written, just as background, came from the interviews that I did. Mm -hmm. So I did not just come up with all this by myself. No, and I think, I think Emma's point, and the part that I agreed with was this is, this is really awesome stuff, but it's not all of it's really relevant to diversity and inclusion. Um, because the, the problem I have with this is that it just talks about contribution types kind of in general, as opposed to um, assessing whether, whether contribution types are in some way influencing diversity of your project. Do you yep. see what I mean? Um, I would, I would be inclined to drastically simplify this and focus it on, focus it on um, diversity and inclusion as opposed to being general about kind of all of these things. And then um, look at whether or not some of this, some of this work should be moved into some of the common, common metrics. Yeah, that works for me. 
Um, so I, I'm still, oh, sorry, I'm still missing the point about why this is, why all of this is not, uh, or shouldn't be part of DNA. So it's part of the contributions or the discussion we are having here. Or, and you can, do you mind elaborating again? Sorry. Um, yeah, I mean, let me, maybe, maybe some specific examples would, yeah. would help. Um, so, I mean, if you, if you, if you look at this, this is really kind of all of the types of contributions that could happen within a, within a project, mm -hmm. um, which is, which is great. But if you're looking at what types of contributions can you make to a project and how do you measure those types of contributions, then that's more of a, like a common metrics, um, thing or maybe something that belongs in one of the other other working groups because it really is focused on what are all of the contribution types hmm. whereas we, what we should be focused on is how do um how do contributions oh yeah i'm not articulating this very well um how do we tie the types of contributions that are being made to whether or not it in uh, impacts the diversity and inclusion in your project because it's not it's not the individual contribution types so things things like um, train an artificial intelligence AI bot to detect and classify contributions um, that really doesn't necessarily have anything to do with whether or not something increases diversity or decreases diversity and inclusion in your project mm -hmm. um, but, but, but it's something that's super it's it's all super interesting and stuff that should be in in some of the metrics but but we've we're we're just missing the tie to diversity and inclusion so i i think that is the core of the criticism that the tie to diversity and inclusion is missing where mm -hmm. what i have right now is a lower level on how do we go about finding out what people are actually doing, where do we look? Mm -hmm. And then maybe what we can focus on today is to put the frame of diversity inclusion on top of it so that we can leverage the information we found out about how people are contributing to then explain how does this help with diversity and inclusion. So from my perspective here is, so we have all of these types of contributions um at least having numbers in terms of not 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 if this is bringing more a more diverse community or it's creating a more inclusive environment but uh this is helping us to to be aware of what's going on in the community across all of the types of contributions um and it happens for instance in, in openstack uh, and, and this is a, a specific case so you cannot generalize but in in the documentation project um, they had more women participating there than uh, producing code, for instance. So the contribution type here, like uh, more documentation related or less documentation related was interesting from a DNI perspective because then we can reach the PTL of that specific project and ask, hey, we have these results. So um, why this difference between perhaps this project and this other project? And how, what can we learn from them, like the best practices of the documentation project with due respect, because we, we knew that that project and specifically and that type of contribution was quite, let's say, successful, building a diverse, uh, a diverse community. And if we have this type of uh, differentiation, then we can extend this to potentially any, any type, right? But this, this is my, my, my thing here, I don't know. Yeah, I feel like this one, this this one's really complicated. I think it's gonna be really hard to make progress on in the meeting, <laughs> um, just because it's it's so incredibly it's so incredibly complex. And I think, um, yeah, gosh, I just don't even know what to do with this one. I mean, I think I think first of all, I think the question. Let's let's just start. Let's just go back to the top and start at the beginning. Mm -hmm. So the question: mm -hmm. Do we recognize all contribution types in equal proportions? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that that necessarily uh, fits with. Um, I'm not. I, uh, 
I'm having a hard time talking today. Um, there's nothing about DNI in the question. Um, and I'm not sure that recognition is really what, what this should be focused on. So I feel like maybe if we clarified the question to be focused on, um, so let's see, which, sorry, which category was this in? Contributor, uh, community, diverse, no. Recognition of good work. It's, a, it's, oh, sorry, it is in the recognition of good work. Uh, okay. It is twice. We have this metric twice. That was one of my issues mm -hmm. that we have it in contribution, uh, right. Con contributor community diversity uh, and recognition of good work. Mm -hmm. huh. So I would say it's like, um, in the same way that we have the demographics of the developers, we can have the contributions types. So if we take this and this is out of the, uh, of the discussion here, then we can have a more DNI focused discussion on the, on, 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 uh, on do we recognize all contributions types in equal proportions, for instance, or do we understand the variety of contribution types? So then it's like we can, we can take the, the, lead, uh, the list of types that we have, like coding, back triaging, blah, 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 blah. And this is, this is part of the focus area. Like, well, this is, this is giving us the framework or the context. And then we go for the questions. And then it happens that we can work on the several uh, contribution types. So the really, the really easy ones, for instance, from a quantitative perspective, is to go directly to the Git repositories and do whatever. Um, perhaps the next step, more quantitative perspective, would be to go to uh, actions or activity in the backtracking system or communication channels or ticketing staff or review processes. And then the next ones are things like even organization or community building and management that those are really important contributions, but are not that easy to automate. So then we need to use another um, approach here, right? But it feels like, so this is, this is what I'm struggling with with contribution type. Contribution type is important for a whole bunch of different reasons. And all the stuff you just described is important to un as far as understanding your community but you didn't really describe how it impacts DNI. Mm -hmm. So what piece of contribution type? So like that, that's what I don't like about this question is how do we, uh, what's, what's the DNI tie in on the, on the question. And that might help us focus the contribution types. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I feel like I have the same problem with this one as I had with organizational diversity and that it's, it's something we need to measure as a project and it's something that's super important, but it just doesn't seem, um, um, but the, say, the breadth, the breadth of this, I think we need to narrow it down to why do we care about this from a, from a diversity and inclusion standpoint? Mm -hmm. Why does contribution type matter from a diversity and inclusion standpoint? Not how do you measure yeah. contribution yeah. type? Because how you measure contribution type is going to be common for, for lots of things, mm -hmm. but, what we should be looking at here is how do we measure the impact of contribution type on diversity and inclusion? Mm -hmm. And I think this is, this is part of the description we have that says a healthy community needs these different types of contributions and consequently a project needs to recognize the people contributing. Once some project recognizes different contributions types, mm -hmm. it becomes more welcoming to people who bring unique skills. Yeah. So this is, this is, the real description that the reason why we are measuring this, right? I guess. Right. Right. So the, the key there from my perspective is actually the recognition mm -hmm. and, and how the recognition of contributions impacts diversity and inclusion mm -hmm. rather than how do we measure all of the different contribution types? Well, how do we measure this? I would say it's part of the discussion in the sample strategy because you need to understand how, how, how to retrieve that data that you need. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's more of a um, project-wide concern. How do you measure contribution type? Yep. As opposed to, so what, what we should be focusing on in this 
in the DNI group is how do we how do we measure how the recognition of contribution mm-hmm. type mm-hmm. impacts diversity and inclusion? Yeah. So my suggestion would be like in the same way that we have uh, in the readme um, the dimensions of diversity and inclusion, and then we have gender identity, sexual orientation, age, location, well, all of this list. We can try to have a similar list for the contributions type. And then we can reference this from any other place we need this. So we take out this knowledge from the uh, document we have, and then we can focus on, we say, hey, if you want to understand all of the contributions types that we were able to, uh, to, to define, well, this is the list. Mm-hmm. What do you think? I'm, So I'm going to be loud again. I, I have been listening. So, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah. Um, so I, I see the point. I mean, I, I think um, it does need to be tied to diversity, uh, DNI explicitly. And contribution type alone doesn't do it for me. Because there are a lot of different um, people or, or contexts where you might want to understand contribution type. And D&I might be one of them, totally agree. Um, but there might be other reasons why you want to understand contribution type. Um, so I think, to me, contribution type alone is a common metric. Full stop. And then if you want to take a look at contribution type as tied to recognition and then subsequently tied to changes in DNI, then it becomes a DNI issue. Um, mm-hmm. So it's almost like it needs to be sorted out in common first. How you would even identify contribution type. Again, full stop there. <laughs> and then if DNI wanted to pick it up, they would say, listen, we can take a look at it. Contribution type, and then subsequently, how it's tied to recognition and/or changes in DNI. Anyway, that's my take. I don't know if that made sense. Mm-hmm. So what I what I take from what all of us are saying is that we are moving some of this over to the common metrics group and want to now focus on how do contribution types affect diversity and inclusion or how does that inform our understanding of how diverse and inclusive our community is. And so to advance that, if you go to the Google Doc that I posted in the chat in the meeting minutes, Mm -hmm. I put two new questions and one was proposed by Emma in the poll request and one I just wrote up based on what we were talking about. So the first one by Emma is, do we understand the variety of contribution types possible in an open source project and what decisions can be made as a result of tracking trends of those contributions on diversity and inclusion? This question, this specific question sounds to me like uh, a more generic discussion for the common working group, definitely. Why the questions that don't, yeah. Yeah, reading it, there are multiple questions in one question. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe we should separate them out. Yeah, I feel like I feel like question two is way too complex. Um, it needs to be simplified. Okay, I separated out the two questions. One is, do we understand the variety of contribution types possible in an open source project, which we agree is common metrics 
material. And the second part is what decisions can be made as a result of tracking trends of those contributions and on diversity and inclusion. Yeah. Which is your point, Don. That's exactly the question here. <laughs> yeah, I, well, decisions can be made. I, I don't like either of those questions, um, just to be, to be clear. Um, I, oh, this is hard. This is super hard. I like the fact that question 2B mentions diversity and inclusion. Um, I think that's a good step in the right direction, but it's not really about what decisions can be made. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't know. Perhaps the, the specific question here is, well, or, or one of them might be how diverse my community is across all of the different contribution types. So then we have uh, an understanding of what's going on, which is, yeah, well, diversity, how diverse. And the other is how can we use this or what can we learn from uh, the results we have in terms of building a more inclusive community? Because diversity for me is like uh, the metric itself and how to become more inclusive is the tool to have better numbers. So I think we need to differentiate between diversity of contributions, mm -hmm. which is agnostic to who is actually doing those contributions mm -hmm. and diversity of people doing those contributions. Yeah. And I think what Don's point is, we are wanting to focus in on the second part, diversity of people and including people. Mm -hmm. And how do diverse contribution types and looking at those help us understand how well we are doing with including people? Yeah, I sort of wrote a fourth question. I don't know if this is better or worse, but at least, um, but from my perspective, there are some key things that need to be included. One is, so recognition, con contribution types, and then somehow get at how does, how does that impact diversity and inclusion? Because this, this is a yes or no answer. Um, this one's focused on decisions, which really isn't, isn't what we're focused on. We don't necessarily, um, we're just trying to help people understand their communities. We're not trying to tell them what they need to do. So I think decisions have to come out of whatever they decide to do with the metrics. And this one doesn't have anything to do with these. The first two don't have anything to do with diversity and inclusion. Hey, so I'm going to make a comment here because I have to drop off. But um, I think one of the things that I'm hearing, and I can't see any of the documents, so, so I'm just going based on what I'm hearing. Um, I think one of the challenges is uh, like chaos in general, that we can provide metrics that will bring information to bear that we think is important information, but then how people use that information is really tricky for us. Mm -hmm. And so I think always, and it, I, it sounds like some of this conversation is going into how people can actually take action. And I think that's going to be a, a bit of a fool's errand personally, because I think we're always like one case away from breaking <laughs> in that regard. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's, that's just kind of my two cents on that one. That I think we should think about the metrics as a way to bring relevant information to bear. And then the actions of people and how they consume that information and make changes, that's really, that gets out of our scope, which is really hard.
And hopefully I'm quieter because I'm now in a car. I'm not driving, mm -hmm. but I'm in a car. Mm, I wonder, I, I'm wondering, what if we try to simplify this at the highest level? So we, let, let's imagine we only have two types of contributions. So you either, either uh, let's say, produce code or you uh, uh, produce documentation. That's all. Um, or even, even only code or participate in a Git repository. So then we have this number, like 20% uh, of the contributors are uh, uh, related to underrepresented uh, groups of people in the community, and the other 80% is, the, well, the rest of the community, right? So how, how is this useful for you? Sorry, I, I was writing a new question. I, yeah, I so, not, so let's imagine we, let, let's simplify this. Uh, at, 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 uh, let, let's sim simplify this. So we, we only have like uh, commits, so we can only produce commits in, in, the, in the community. And then we have like, uh, well, just a number, like in OpenStack, like 15% uh, are women and then 85% uh, are men. So how, how is this useful for you, this number? Why do we need this number? Because if we don't need this number, then we can go to the next one. So from my perspective, having this number on the table is useful for awareness. So to understand what's going on, because if not, if, I mean, OpenStack, for instance, is like 7,000, 8,000 people contributing there. So we don't know all of the community. Same for CNCF or the Linux kernel or anything else. So the perception that people have is, well, it seems uh, there are not enough uh, women in the first place and then other underrepresented uh, uh, groups of people here. And we all agree that bringing more people, more diverse people will bring more different point of view. Uh, so it's, it, this so, will drive equation, et cetera. I, one of the things that I'm thinking about is when we look at contribution types, we can drill down into where are our diverse people contributing to. Mm -hmm. Because if we have a diverse community, but only men are making commits and the women are doing all the organizing and other stuff, mm -hmm. then without recognizing diverse contribution types, we are limiting the focus of who we are recognizing. Mm -hmm. and so opening up the analysis to looking at different contribution types and seeing who is contributing in all these different ways gives us a better picture of the diversity and inclusion across the project. I'm taking note that at the very end of the document, at least to have this somewhere. <laughs> yeah. And so the, and Don, in your question, you have impacts, diversity and inclusion. Um, impact is a causality, um, which again is related to decision-making. So, Maybe we can formulate it more openly. What's the, how does that compare to the questions that we use in other, let's look at some of the other questions as examples. Yeah, I just opened event diversity because I had the same question. Yeah. And there we do use uh, yes, no questions like are diversity tickets offered for an event? Mm -hmm. um, How does the code of conduct for events support diversity and inclusion? So we could do some like, how does recognizing various contribution types support diversity and inclusion? So going to your specific comment, Georg, um, 
I think, so what you said, this is helping us to understand where diverse people are contributing to. Um, what happened, for instance, is, as you said, 100% of the uh, code is done by, by men. So what's going on? Perhaps then the, the problem is related to, I don't know, uh, event uh, to being inclusive in, during the events. And then we, but those are the tools that are going to improve in somehow the diversity in those specific contribution types. But the point is that this understanding where the issue is, where the bottleneck is, then you can go there and fix this. But perhaps the issue is not like there in, in that people don't know how to use Git. The, the issue is somewhere else, like in the even the design meetings where people need to go or the hackathons or I don't know. So this is something that we don't know, but the numbers are useful for trying to guess what's going on. I think it's also when we start looking at contribution types and who's contributing across the project, if we suddenly see that in the documentation, all of our minorities are fleeing or stop contributing, then that's a warning sign. While as the project level, they might still be involved, but we might identify that there is someone toxic in the documentation project. I just throw that out there as food for thought. <laughs> so I still think that having different Understanding how diverse the people, well, as you said, contrib are contributing to each of the contribution types will help to at least be aware of what's going on. And then this helps to have new pointers to look for uh, specific ways of improving. Are we, still, are we still talking about recognition, though? Because I feel like we've lost that bit. Is this still the recognition category? Because I don't feel like the stuff that we've, we've talked about in the last few minutes have really, really had much to do with how does the recognition. Yeah, well, uh, you, uh, Garrick mentioned that this metric is. is this in... one is so incredibly complex. I'm... Yeah. So, uh, Garrick mentioned. This is... A little progress, though, just a little bit. <laughs> So again, the problem we have is that contribution type shows up in contributor community diversity and recognition of good work. And I think you're right that what I've, we've been discussing over the last few minutes falls into the first, mm -hmm. the contributor community yeah. diversity. Yeah. Same for I me. I think here's, here's my advice. I think what, what I would do with this is I would take it and I would break it down into the components that we've talked about. So and stay laser focused on those areas. So do one for recognition, do one for, what was the other category that I keep uh, forgetting? Contributor community diversity. Yeah, um, contributor community diversity and pull out all of the stuff that really belongs in common and end up with maybe three things that are really kind of laser focused on the, on the right things and then and then I think it'll be easier to, to take another look at and review because it feels like we're just muddying the waters because we're just trying to do too much stuff mm -hmm. um, rather than being focused on the bits that this working group needs to focus on. Does that make sense? I mean, I, mean, I know I'm being like nitpicky and super like tactical, but. Um, I think it's a good way forward. Yeah. Um, divide and conquer. Yeah, I just feel like this document's doing too much and it's just confusing me. Okay. I'll take that on as an action item for the next few days. Okay. Um, sorry, since we only have three minutes left, should we, are we canceling next week for KubeCon? I'll be at KubeCon and not, not in this meeting. I know that Daniel, Nicole, and Sarah will also be at KubeCon. Mm -hmm. Yep, let's cancel. Okay. <laughs> Thank you.
I do feel like we made a lot of progress. I, I don't want to be like <laughs> Debbie Downer. Um, I feel like we at least better understand why people are having such a hard time with this one. Oops, I just noticed that I've been keeping minutes on last week. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. Oops. So we're cancel next week, May 20. The meeting is May 27. Which I'll join from Spain. Mm -hmm. Okay, Sounds awesome. Like place. Cool. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I do think we have made little progress in understanding this better. Yeah, no, I feel like we've actually made a fair bit of progress despite not actually writing a lot of stuff in the doc. Yeah. Sometimes it's just a matter of understanding it better and uh, getting the differences between us resolved. Yeah, for sure. So, thank you so much. Cool. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Have a good week. Bye. 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 Bye.